everyone, I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Duane, and this week we're testing our grey matter with some of the most intelligent Emiratis on the planet. We'll speak to two child prodigies, one of whom has been named one of the smartest teenagers in the world. And at just 14, Adib has already applied for seven scientific patents. I think I might work maybe in a business field, maybe with the government. My ambitions might change, they might not, but I want to give as much as I can to my beautiful country. The other just happens to be Adib's sister, Dana, who, aged 12, is one of the youngest astronaut candidates training with NASA. I ended up being the best in the course. I was proud of myself. The UAE is investing heavily in its high-achieving students within the fields of science, technology, engineering, and maths. The hope is that they might one day help the country achieve its goal to race to space. Salim Saeed has more. Persian scientists like Mohammed ibn Musa al-Khawarizmi and Nasir al-Din al-Tusi rose to fame between the 8th and 14th centuries for making historical discoveries about planetary movements. Since then, the Middle East region has been looking to enter the space race. And in 1985, Saudi Prince Sultan bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz al Saud became the first Arab to travel outside the Earth's atmosphere when he flew aboard an American space shuttle mission. While countries in the MENA region, like Egypt, already have plans to build space programs, the most developed space industry to date is in the UAE. It's just four years old, but has plans to send the first Arab probe to Mars by 2021, which will be exactly 50 years after the seven Emirates came together to form one nation. Not only that, it recently announced two Emiratis who have qualified for the final phase of the UAE astronaut program to become the first Arabs to visit the International Space Station by April of next year. The UAE is looking to become a world leader in space technology by 2021. And to do that, it's investing in its most valuable resource, young scientists. For these budding scientists, learning more about space is something fun to do in Dubai during their summer holidays. With students aged 9 to 18 participating in the UAE's first ever Space and Rocketry Academy camp that follows NASA's teaching curriculum. This group of 30 enthusiasts is designing scaled models of rockets with real firepower that are capable of carrying a small item and are launched by the burning of solid fuel, mimicking the controlled explosion of an actual space rocket. It's like a dream uh, that would uh, probably come true. It encourages me. And building this rocket it makes me like more influenced. It makes me feel excited to learn more and discover like more about uh, space and other stuff. To truly get the feel and taste of how astronauts live, the students are sampling dehydrated space ice cream sandwiches, thinking up strategies for a Mars rover, and overall, learning about the challenges and opportunities that becoming a space scientist could one day give them. I would definitely be like very happy if like my spaceship landed on Mars or like someone like made a new discovery with my head. That dream could become a reality as the UAE Space Agency has confirmed its plans to build the first human settlement on Mars by 2117. And in preparation for the planetary migration, it has started building a red planet model city on Earth. According to Dr. Jim Rice, who's worked for more than 30 years with NASA on projects such as the Mars rover Opportunity, the UAE and his students at the camp are set on the right course for success. I've been telling him here about, you know, space travel is dangerous. There are failures, but you don't quit. And those, I think, are lessons for life no matter what you go into. As the country's research and interest into space continues to grow, this small camp also has ambitions to one day become more than just a summer program. Plans to fire up interest in the next generation of potential astronauts with after-school activities and a permanent learning center to fuel their imagination and who knows, perhaps one day, a future space mission. Whilst your average teenager might enjoy spending time with their friends, doing a bit of gaming or surfing on social media, there are others who prefer to bury their heads in books about astrophysics. Adib and Dana Albushi are not your average young students. On top of their schoolwork, they're being hot-housed and mentored in institutions like the Khalifa University in Abu Dhabi 
and NASA in the United States. And they've received lifelong educational scholarships from members of the UAE's royal family, including Dubai's Crown Prince Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed Al Maktoum and the UAE's Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan of Abu Dhabi. Adib, a name which is Arabic for scholar, was dismantling toys from an early age before he would play with them. Currently studying for his GCSEs, including economics and psychology, he's a gifted engineer and an accomplished problem solver. And at the age of seven, he had invented a prosthetic leg for his father and a robotic cleaner for his mother. He's also the CEO of his own company, which holds workshops and leadership programs focused on promoting social harmony and knowledge sharing. And with more than 100 awards to his name, he's also one of the UAE's youngest peace and education ambassadors for many local and international institutions. Adib, a very warm welcome to Inspire Middle East. Uh, thank you for having me here. Thank you for having us in your home. In terms of your inventions to date, and of all the scientific patents that you have pending, which invention has meant the most to you? Which one do you hope will go to the mass market in the UAE? If it was about market, I wouldn't be handling things the way I currently am. It's about getting it to as many people as possible to try to help people as much as possible. It's about trying to minimize the issues that we have here in the UAE. Now, Sheikh Hamdan has long been a supporter of your academic studies and also your future ambitions. What's the best piece of advice that he's given you? I'd say the best piece of advice he's given me is a very simple piece, but it's very, very meaningful. It's never, ever, ever give up. It's something I say a lot to people because it's that important and it's something that he also said to me. But it's not always easy, is it? So where does your self-belief come from? Where does that determination come from? It's, it's powered by people who need help, people who are in situations where things can be improved, but no one goes out of their way to improve them. It's, it's simple things. You're currently studying for your GCSEs, but after that and beyond university, what might be a dream job? I think I might work maybe in a business field, maybe with the government. My ambitions might change, they might not, but I want to give as much as I can to my beautiful country. Your organization, the Future Simulation Center, has three key objectives to envision, to implement, and to inspire. Now, your CEO of this organization, possibly the youngest CEO that I've ever interviewed. So what makes a good leader, in your opinion? A good leader is someone who will go one for all. This person will always take responsibility for everything, and he will do anything for uh, his team, anything for the people he's working with. That's a good leader. Being one of the smartest teams in the world, what's the smartest thing you know? Impress me. The smartest thing I know, that's a difficult question, but the smartest thing I know is how not to give up, how to continue, how to persevere. And what I do isn't for money, it's not for fame, it's not for recognition. What I do is to help people. And if one day everyone forgets about me, people don't recognize me, it won't affect me at all. Adib, it's been great to meet you. Thank you for talking to me today. Well, uh, thank you for having me. Thank you. Despite their young years, both Adib and his sister Dana are authors in the making, penning books which chart their scholarly journeys and achievements to date. And Dana, being the youngest Emirati to have undergone training courses with NASA, says that it's her supportive parents and her brother who encourage her to be a trailblazing student. Dana, a very warm welcome to Inspire. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Your brother Adib has inspired you to walk the academic path that you're on. Tell me about your relationship. We're extremely close, and um, I would say he's more of a he's more of a best friend to me than a brother. Um, he inspires me in ways I can't even describe. Now, you're one of the youngest people to have undergone training with NASA. Now, the training you had wasn't just theoretical, it was also practical. Tell me about one of the mini missions that they sent you on. There was this course called Water Robotics, and one of the requirements is to um, go underwater and practically scuba dive. I was extremely scared to do the course, so I went for it, but I ended up being the best in the course. Now sometimes, especially ahead of exam periods, you can study for up to 13, 14 hours a day. Do you ever feel that there's too much pressure with such an accelerated learning program? 
sometimes yes but i i am very um glad to have like my brother with me because he helps me and he, do he doesn't just tell me the answer he makes sure that i understand every single step and then he um tells me the answer. When you're not studying, how do you like to relax? Rumor has it that you're a keen writer, is this true? I'm actually publishing a book next year in March. One of my favorite stories in the book is about how His Highness Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan discovered me in the uh, UAE Pioneers event. I promised him that I would become better than Adib and nine months later, I um, graduated Space University and NASA and um, I received 11 certificates and uh, two gold medals. He was very proud of me and that is why it's one of my favorite stories. I can't wait to see what the future holds for you, Dana. Thank you for speaking to me today. Thank you for having me. Well, that's a wrap for this week, and don't forget you can catch all of our shows online at euronews.com. Before I say goodbye, here are some bright young things getting creative on social media. Sorsan from Lebanon took this euphoric shot of her daughter Serena, learning the science behind a volcano with the help of tomato sauce, vinegar, and baking soda. Ahmed from Bahrain posted this shot of STEM students at his workplace seconds before a carbon dioxide explosion. And 11-year-old Abdul Rahman from Egypt is pictured with one of his robotic creations, debuted at the Young Scientists Workshop in Sharjah.